years ago when I was uh, working at this collision shop as a porter, I did acid once. And it wasn't nearly as terrifying as you might expect it to be. Uh, actually, every hallucination I experienced was a, a pleasant surprise. The walls didn't melt. Um, they became lined with red velvet pillows. And then Randall Tex Cobb approached me. And he was fresh out of the shower. He wasn't uh, wearing anything but this uh, lampshade around his waist. Um, and he had this mean look on his face, which I guess was the only way Tex Cobb's face could look. Uh, just mean and, and funny, but only funny if he's uh, if he was trying to rape somebody, I guess. Anywho, he walks up to me and he spins me around on this 400-pound uh, tumor that I'm sitting on. Yeah, I'm sitting on a massive tumor that's just been uh, surgically removed from this guy who'd been bedridden for eight years while it grew in his right butt cheek. And the surgeon's team, they're now wheeling the patient and all of their equipment away. And, yeah, I'm sitting on this bloody, uh, pulsating tumor that they've just extracted. And I know it weighed exactly 400 pounds because uh, it had a grocery store price tag on it displaying the weight and the uh, price per pound. And it was a pretty good deal, I have to say. Um, but this, this whole thing doesn't bother me, though, because Tex Cobb starts rubbing skin so soft into my shoulders. I don't know where my shirt went. It's like, poof, it's just gone. And though I don't usually, you know, like getting rubbed down by dudes, I have to admit, this was uh, this was pretty nice. I mean, I, I thought his hands would be uh, coarse from all those years as a, as a boxer and a kickboxer, but they weren't that way at all. I mean, pressed into my shoulders, they felt like uh, rabbits, like furry little rabbits with uh, um, cell phones vibrating in their, in their tiny bellies. So... Things went on this way for a little while until Taylor Swift shows up. And all she's got on is this uh, dirty tire, this little piece of rope sticking out of it like it was a, a tire swing on somebody's uh, property down south. And she she cut it down and, and now she just she's just holding it around her waist. She lets that thing slip down to the floor and she tells me that she found this tire while she was metal detecting on the sun. Okay, so I figure I'm going to call... BS. I mean, everything's been dreamy up until this point, but I mean, I have to say something about this lie. I mean, the sun's obviously too hot to get any metal detecting done on it, so, you know, all of a sudden I'm wondering, I mean, why is she lying? I mean, what the hell is she trying to hide? But I, I figure, okay, I'm just going to start questioning her, and then I'll, I'll let her slip up, and then she'll, you know, have to spill the beans when I catch her, you know, in one of her lies. So I ask her, okay, well, how did you get to the sun then? But by the time I figure, you know, on asking her that, she's she's sucking on my toes. I mean, she's sucking on my, my damn toes, which really surprised me because I, I had no idea that she was into that, and she didn't even ask. She just went right for him, and, you know, I, I had just been walking around uh, barefoot on this floor. So, you know, I looked down on the floor, and I saw a few syringes, snail shells, and one loaded diaper, and I'm thinking, God, Taylor, you, I'm, you're gonna, you're gonna pick up some kind of a virus sucking on these feet, you know. But before I could protest, Tex just lays her out with, with one right hook, just clips her on the chin, and just leaves her out cold on her back, you know, with uh, with her eyes rolled up in her head. And uh, you know, I'm really surprised she didn't bite my big toe off on impact, but she didn't. I mean, Tex did it just right um, and then he asks me you know what should we do with her he's like what should we do with her boss for whatever reason I'm in charge and um, I say well just leave her alone for right now just leave her alone I mean she's naked and she looks good from that angle whenever she wakes up we'll, we'll get her some acid too Tex but you know you, you probably shouldn't hit her anymore you're gonna you're gonna hurt her He's like, all right, you know, sounds good. And then um, Tex and I played some duck hunt, and we shared a box of uh, chicken and a biscuit crackers, which are amazing. If you haven't tried chicken and a biscuit crackers, go hunt down a box right away. Um, after a while, Taylor got up, you know, and she, she started holding her tire again and acted like, like nothing had happened. 
she took off while Tex and I were playing Lethal Enforcers for Genesis because uh, she had a concert to perform. At least that's what she said. And you know, the truly amazing thing is, Tex was able to continue rubbing my shoulders the whole time that this, this stuff's going down because he grew an extra pair of arms, you know, to do it. And uh, after a while, the big tumor I was sitting on, it turned into this raspberry-filled punchki, the glazed kind. And Tex and I ate that with, uh, with a couple of platinum spoons. And that's all I remember. I do get the flashbacks, but, you know, they're all pleasant flashbacks. They actually kind of, uh, they motivate me. You know, they improve my outlook on life whenever I get these acid flashbacks. So, yeah, my one experience with acid, you know, much like all of the different experiences that I've had with alien abduction, it was good. <laughs>